ready for this video. I think we're all set up. I think we're gonna... Alright, so we are gonna play some Mono Green Tron for this first video. Um, and see how it goes. Um, I've been playing Mono Green Tron for a while now. Um, gonna do a quick walkthrough of the deck. And then after that we're gonna just uh, jump into Competitive League. Um, so, with this deck, there are a couple of things that you'll see change from time to time, but uh, I'm going to go over the deck as uh, how I have it set up. So, the first thing I have here is the main deck. Um, so, I have four forests, and you'll see people uh, bounce between four to five forests, but I've been pretty good on the four forests because I want to have an extra utility land. Um, the utility lands that you usually see are the Sanctum of Ugin and... Um, ghost Quarter. Now, sometimes people swap the Ghost Quarter for the Field of Ruin. Um, I like Ghost Quarter being able to activate without that mana investment. And then we have Urza's Factory. I'm a big fan of this card. Uh, being able to fetch up a reliable blocker or start creating some pressure and take out an opponent. Um, some people might play some additional graveyard hate in this spot, but I wasn't impressed by it, so I just didn't want to go with that route. Um, after that, we have the Urza's Lands. Um... And then you're just going to be running a four of each one of those. The land, the, the spells that you're not really going to see much of a change on is the four ancient stirrings, four sylvan scryings, four spheres, and four stars, and four maps. Those are pretty much always going to be a four of. I haven't seen anyone drop that down. Um, and that's your ability to f just assemble Tron. So stirrings and map dedicated to just assembling Tron. And then ancient stirrings is there to help you either assemble Tron or find a threat. Now, I'm playing three relics. Um, some people like to run two, some people want to go four. I found three is a pretty good number for me to be at. Um, graveyard decks are pretty huge right now. You want to be able to respond to them, and worst case scenario, this is a cantrip, but it's very relevant against the majority of decks out there. Um, o stones are almost always at a four of, it's your best sweeper. Um, but some people like to go down to three for an additional uh, threat, but I'm pretty happy with the four. Uh, Karns are always at a 4 of. I think I've only seen one list not run a 4 of. Um, and it was a very odd list in the last year. Um, and, you know, if you can drop a turn 3 Karn, you're pretty much going to win that game. Uh, the creature threats I have here are Worm Coil Engine, Walking Ballista, and Ulamog. Um, and then that's going to be your pretty, pretty you regular. Uh, creature setup. Uh, I'm going with three ballistas and three worm coils because I want to have just be able to drop more of them. Um, sometimes I might flex to a fourth worm coil if I want to have expecting a really aggro meta, but three and three is a pretty good spot. Um, and then your Ugans are your board sweepers. Um, some people like to put a world breaker in the slot here and sometimes that would either mean you remove a ballista a ugin or a worm coil i don't really like world breaker right now so i'm sticking with just the ugins and then lastly we have the ulamogs which are going to be your game enders um i went off to one for a bit but i've been pretty good at the two right now uh, moving on to the cyborg you're gonna see some pretty uh, familiar cards here from every um, Tron deck. Uh, Nature's Claim, being able to deal with your artifact enchantment hate is pretty popular as people are going to be bringing in the damping spheres, the stony silences against you. Uh, Thrag Test for your aggro matchups, your Thought Knots here for um, more of a mid-range game plan as well as just being a really high quality threat to remove a card out of someone's hand, shake up their combo. Um, Spatial Contortion for those creature matchups. I play two Surgicals and a fourth Relic. Some people don't like to play the additional Relics in the side, but I'm a fan of it because, once again, I, it's such a solid card. It's always going to be relevant, and it's always going to be at least a cantrip. And then Emrakul is one of my favorite cards just for the combo deck, so you get to drop that and kill them with their own combo. So We are going to go ahead and jump into a Modern League here. Let's see what we can find for our opponents. Mm -hmm. 
And let me know if I uh, sound all right and need to adjust anything. I can definitely move things around. Being the first stream I've done, uh, don't know the quality of everything. So walking through the hands I keep here, um, the usual rule of thumb is I want to be able to assemble Tron at the very least by turn four. Um, if I can't assemble turn three, obviously that's great. Um, here we have a hand that Ancient Strings might find us another piece, but we only got one, um, one Urza's land. So we really don't want to keep this. So I'm going to go ahead and mulligan. And that's one of the biggest things to me about playing Tron is that you want to aggressively mulligan because you want to assemble Tron. That's your number one game plan. If you're not doing that, you're going to lose the game. <laughs> I'm not going to call you daddy. Um, hands that have two Tron pieces, I'll generally keep. This one's a little bit shaky because it doesn't have a payoff either, but it does have a star. It gives an extra card deep, and we get to scry. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this one. Ballista's good enough to keep for me on top. As far as like stars and spheres, if you ever have the option to play one or the other, um, you want to play the star if you have the risk of it getting blown up. Um, looks like we're against one of the aggro decks. So here I have the option to crack the star and actually get a green source. Um, I'm not going to do that because in case I draw an Ancient Stirrings or a Sylvan Scrying, I want to be able to have access to that green source. So I'm just going to be playing a land passing. Move the pick up so you can see the whole hand. It might not be mono red. Uh, just because it could be um, one of the... Let's move this down a bit. Yeah, mono red is a tough matchup if that's what it's going to be, though. It could be like one of those uh, mono reds. Uh, Phoenix decks, but. Definitely mono red. Alright, so we wanted the access to the green, we got it. So we are going to take the worm coil engine here because in case we can assemble Tron, this will get us into the game. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump. You generally are right, but not always. Looks like this is going to be a painful turn. Alright, so my plan here is to just play the Ballista for two. And then hopefully I can block and shoot down the uh, Eidolon. And see if we get lucky with a rip off the top. Things are not looking good for us. We're gonna go down to two here, and we're done. So, I'm gonna go ahead and concede and move on to the, the next one. 
All right, so with the uh, sideboarding here, usually you're gonna take, want to take obviously all the dead cards, so the cards that just don't matter for me, that's gonna be your relics are pretty much useless. Um, your O stones won't do anything for you because the usually when you're wiping the board, it's not gonna be impactful enough because you're usually only killing one or two things, and it's such a heavy mana investment. So the things I want to bring into the Thragtus. I want to bring in the Thought Knots. I also don't want any of the top ends, so like Ulamog is just not good enough here. Uh, I want to bring in the Spatial Contortions because that's good for those early kills. Um, something that you usually want to bring in is the Nature's Claim because you can blow up your own artifacts for the extra life, or you can hit an Eidolon um, as well. So that's pretty relevant. So usually I'm going to cut my Ugans and I'm going to bring in the Nature's Claim. Um, now, one of the things that I usually like to do that people will argue with me on is bringing in Emrakul. Um, I like to bring it in because if I feel it has a spot because it can, you can cast it usually for a pretty reasonable cost. And when you are casting it, you're going to be able to empty out their entire hand and swing their creatures into yours. So I'm going to be doing that here and we're going to run it like this. Alright, so once again, this hand's really going to be assembling Tron very slowly. It doesn't have any pieces to start with, and it can find two, but that's just not good enough for us. Things are not looking great here. We're uh, no Tron piece, no way to find it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and mulligan this as well and go down to five. This is rough. Um, I'm going to keep this, but I'm not happy about it, so. And we'll take the map on top. So because map's on top, we're not going to want to Ancient Stirrings because we actually want to grab that. So I'm just going to play the Forest here and then play the Star. And uh, thanks for everybody that has joined. This is my first stream, trying to get going, play a lot of uh, Modern is my plan on uh, Moto, and then I plan on playing a lot of um, Arena for Standard. So we're gonna crack the star here, get a card deeper, um, and then we're gonna start this. We're just not good at Tron, assembling Tron today, it looks like. So we're gonna grab the extra land. And we're going to play a Sphere. So we got scrying, that's good. So I'm gonna crack the sphere, get a card deeper. Still didn't find another Tron piece. So I can use the nature's claim here to take out the Eidolon, I'll take two damage. But it takes a creature out of his board and then I'll be able to start playing the scryings and the maps in order to start getting those Tron pieces. So. another Tron piece here so I have the option of either casting the map and then I can uh, assemble Tron next turn or I can cast the ballista for two here and then I would be able to kill the goblin guide um, and I'm virtually at nine right now so I, I would be going down to seven I'm okay with uh, not assembling Tron right away because I want to just kind of stem the bleeding
Oh, there's two rift bolts on suspend. And a spike. And another spike. So we're dead. Good times, good times. That's okay, that's okay. That's a, that's a pretty rough matchup. <laughs> Uh, so for anyone that doesn't know me, um, I've been playing Magic since uh, 10th edition um, and Time Spiral era. I uh, got into it playing a lot of Kitchen Table Magic, I think as a lot of people do with um, Magic the Gathering. And uh, after that it evolved into actually going to your local stores, playing in events, playing in more events. Um, then my friend Andrew at the time really wanted to chase that competitive scene so we started going to events with him and we would see where we it could take us and uh, I played for quite a number of years with a bunch of friends from the Grand Rapids area and we went to pretty much every single GP we could get our hands on every PTQ go to pretty much if there was a magic event that was decent it was within like 10 to 12 hours we were willing to travel to it all right so this is a great hand we got two tron pieces with a redundant one and we got a map and we got two threats so we're going to go ahead and keep this after i did a lot of grinding for a while uh, I never really broke it into any, like, big events. Um, I top aided a bunch of events, took down a bunch of other events, but kind of irrelevant because, you know, if you don't win big, it doesn't really mean much. And then um, my school and work got in the way, so then I decided to... Spreading, seizing the tower. That's okay, we got a redundant piece. So not a problem. So I took a break for like three and a half years, four years or something like that. And then uh, I just came back to it about, a, I think it was like a year and a half ago. And uh, now that I'm in a better place with my work and I can travel more, so starting to uh, grind more events. wins us the game it's great times so this should be a blue white control um, so with blue white control my usual plan is that I want to bring in the threats that I can play early on um, such as Thread tusk and bot knots but I also want to bring in the nature's claims because they're usually just really beneficial um, in being able to apply pressure and then this will take care of like whatever cyborg piece they're going to bring in to hate on us. Um, I'm usually not a fan of things that are just like easily pathable and it doesn't really create a big impact. Um, and then the graveyard usually doesn't matter that much to blue-white decks. Um, so I like other than relic and I don't, usually I don't care as much about that. Um, so I'll usually board out the relics here and then I'll also board out the um, your worm coils. And then I'm bringing all these in and then I'm bringing out Ballista for a similar reason. So this hands, is it really the best deck in modern? I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna switch decks just because of that. <laughs> so this hand's pretty rough. Um, it doesn't have access to a green source. Um, it has access to a map. If I get any other, um, any other land, this hand's fine. So I'm gonna keep it.
right, so we drew a sphere, which is great. So we're going to play that. And then that way we can either lead with the uh, scryings or the ancient stirrings next turn. So we didn't draw land here, so I'm going to crack it for a green, and I'm going to cast Stirring, see if we can get another land. Looks like we did, but it is a repeat Tron piece, so we'll take it. And, uh, the new set's legal now, so I believe, so I'm curious if the, what's going to happen to Modern, if there's any shakeups. I'm particularly excited for Vanifar, I've already picked up the entire deck. Uh, we drew another Tron piece here, so we drew the Mine. So we're just going to ship it back to our opponent's turn, and then we're going to fetch up the tower so we can assemble Tron. So we could play Karn here or play Thought Knot. Um, Karn should be a pretty good way to end the game, um, but he could mana leak it or negate it. Um, I feel like leading off Thought Knot's the safer play. And then that way, if it does resolve, I would be able to snag whatever other uh, counter spells he has out of his hand. And if he has mana leak, I can obviously pay for it. So. Looks like there's a Logic Knot and a Cryptic. And we're going to take that Cryptic. So let's. I'm curious what they will fuel the ruin. So, like, the correct play is usually you take out the uh, lower cost um, Tron piece, the t one of the two, so then they have to invest the three into it. So, But if the opponent does make the correct decision here, they would get punished for it because we have another mine in hand. Alright, so that's what they're doing. So we have the uh, option of playing uh, either Karn or, and yeah, our opponent is saying that we got skill, and that is true. We're good at uh, drawing Tron pieces, and that's how we win games. Um, so if our opponent Logic Knots, they can Logic Knot for one additional mana, then four lands, so for five. Um, so Karn would still get countered. So in that case here, I'm going to go with the Ulamog, because I can still exile his uh, lands in the next turn, go Sanctum. And then so Pona has one unknown in hand island and a colonnade. Alright, so we're going to play 
play Sanctum here and then drop a card. If our opponent has a cryptic here, they can technically counter the Karn and then bounce the Sanctum. So then we don't get it, but they don't always know that. In case here, it doesn't look like they're aware of it or don't care. And I will sacrifice. And um, I can go get another Thought Knot here and cast it right away and then rip another thing out of his uh, card out of their hand, but Blue Mog should be enough to end the game next turn. Um, and I'm going to cycle this star. And then we're going to see if we can get something off of this Stirrings as well. Nothing exciting. I'm going to take that O Stone. And then we're going to go ahead and Sylvan Scry. Uh, I'm going to grab the Factory here because it's a great way to also close out the game against Control. Hey, Gorbachan. Thanks for joining, man. And that's the game. All right, we're 1-1 one, one into the league. If I got a haircut, I got a haircut last week. I'm still using the same haircut. I use an undercut with a zero on the side with a fade. All right, so this hand here has one Tron piece, another land, and then it has uh, an expedition map. Um, I'm gonna move my screen up. And Reese was saying that it was blocking the view a bit, so here and that should be better for you guys um so we're gonna keep this so yeah i got it trimmed up which might make it look different but it's not i guess it's not a new haircut by any means but i am lazy in between haircuts sometimes so my sides do grow up so it does definitely look like a different hairstyle So we're gonna crack that, get a green source, ancient stirrings. Oof. All right, so uh, we already have uh, two uh, threats and we have, uh, this map will probably be good in case we fail to get another Tron piece here. So we're gonna stirrings again. And we got a Tron piece, that's great. So our next turn, we'll just go mine into map, into tower, and then do a turn four Tron. And if this is mono red burn, we'll be dropping the worm coil. I wish my hair was always perfect. Keep making my life so easy. Oof, that's rough, the chalice on one. <laughs> oh, that's a bummer. All right, so. Um, this is probably free win red then. So we're going to play an O stone here and we're going to see if we can get up to five mana to crack it. We are so good at this game. Folks, if you've ever wondered what it's like to be a Tron player and that right there, that moment. That's being a Tron player. And we're gonna Karn here and see if they concede. They do, this is great. Quality magic right there, folks, quality magic. All right, so this is free win red. So this should mean that they're on like the Simeon Spirit Guide 
um, rituals to power up like a really relevant three drop like Blood Moon or well, like the Rabble Master or the Chalices. Um, so here I don't really care about the relics. And then realistically I'm not going to be casting my top end cards. So I want to go lower to the ground. And then I do want the ability to take out a threat in case they have one, such as the Rabble Master. And then I want to bring in the claims. Now that's useless usually against the chalices, but if they have like the Blood Moon, I want to be able to blow that up. Um, after that, we got to cut some additional cards here. Um, I Once again, I'm going to cut the top ends because I don't necessarily need those cards. And then the other card here that I'm going to cut that I know a lot of people will be mad about is the card. It's just not... Uh, card that I want to be casting this matchup. Usually if I can get a creature onto the board and then just stay, al um, stay alive and beat them down with it, that's going to win me the game. I don't need to just exile their stuff. And I'm keeping the O-Stone in here because I want to be able to blow up the board, um, such as taking out the Blood Moon, taking out the Chalices. This is great. We got two Tron pieces, a Sphere, Scrying, we got a relevant threat to grab, and we got a board sweeper if we need it. So, this is just a fantastic hand. And so, we're just going to lead off with a sphere and just pass it back to our opponent. And then, next turn, we'll drop the tower, crack the sphere, um, get a scrying cast off, and then we'll assemble Tron. Chalice on one, we're okay with that. Green, tower, scrying, and we're going to find that power for him. And then we're going to ship it back to our opponent. Um, you should be able to just subscribe to me. And then it'll tell you that you can do the, uh, the use your prime. So that's a blood moon from our opponent, and we're okay with that. Um, we're going to just lead off with the other piece here, and then um, we're going to cast O Stone and then pass it back to our opponent. Looks like our opponent's a little mana starved with lands and having to use the rituals. So that's like one of the relevant uh, three drop creatures that they'll use the Legion War Boss or the Rabble Master to try to kill us with. And so we're okay with that. Um, so here we're going to cast the Ballista for two. So we, we have the option here of either shooting down the War Boss right now. Um, and then it will take him out and then we'll only have to deal with a token or we could block and then shoot down the tokens. Um, I'd rather just get rid of the war boss right now. I know that it could potentially um, leave some damage, but I don't want to, like I'm going to kill the war boss. I don't really care about the Dalvin token, so I don't really feel like I would want to put another one on the board if I can avoid it. So they're going to blow up our Oblivion Stone, which is just extremely rude from our opponent. Alright, so the only thing we could really do here is cast uh, Sylvan Scrying to find um, another spell. And we're going to do that just in case we draw a Worm Coil, we want to be able to cast it. Uh, I don't necessarily care about being able to assemble Tron uh, or having a redundancy here. So in case we do get rid of Blood Moon, um, I'm just going to go for the Factory because I can then um, start pressuring with just the Factory in case we don't draw anything else. bunch of spells that we get countered so we're just gonna play our lane and ship it back to our opponent
There is a Rabble Master. We could really use a threat. Chandra means we're going to be dead here pretty soon. I'm pretty sure we have to draw a threat this turn, otherwise we're just dead. And that is an O-Stone with us only having 7 mana. So we are dead. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, concede to our opponent. Move on to the next game. So I don't really have any uh, things that I would want to change here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just run it back. So this hand's a little awkward. Uh, we only have a map and we can't activate it on turn two. Um, we've got the star to dig us an extra card deeper, um, but if we don't hit that, um, don't hit a relevant spell like Ancient Surge, we're just gonna be dead. So I'm gonna go ahead and ship this. This hand just has too much risk to go on with it. <sighs> we're in a similar situation here. Um, and so, I still don't like this. I get two draws here though, and a scry, so I'm more inclined to keep this one. And we've got a power plant on top. So we're just gonna go ahead and play star and pass it back to our opponent, because we can assemble Tron turn three. So I'm going to try to get on a regular uh, streaming schedule here. Uh, my plan is to stream Sunday nights after I finish all of my homework. And then I'm going to try to stream one more day during the week, depending on my work schedule. And I'll probably be either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, depending on what I have available. Uh, any uh, streams that I do, though, I'll make sure to record it and upload it on my YouTube channel. So Pona has a Magnus here, so we're just going to see if we can get a little bit deeper and get some uh, additional lands going, which is good. We got one. Um, and the reason I wanted that was to be able to play the Ballista for two and take out the Magnus. So I'm just going to go ahead and ship it back to them right now. That's unfortunate. They got a spell skype to prevent us from doing that. Alright, so we did get another land though, which is good because now we can cast the uh, O Stone and crack it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just cast the O Stone and we're going to see if they have another braid. And they do. All 
already here. So there's a very good chance we're just going to be um, playing out the ballista. Nope, we're going to drop another ballistone, see if they have a repeat. So, how's your guys' weekends going? You guys, uh, for anyone that's in uh, Grand Rapids here in West Michigan, we're expecting a pretty nasty snowstorm, I guess, this week and tomorrow. So, that's going to be a whole lot of fun this week. Alright, so we got another piece. So, I'm just going to play the land and pass it back to my opponent. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is in case they want to play another uh, Blood Moon effect or anything like that, I can still blow it up if I wait until the end of their turn. If I blow it up now, they can play another one and I'm back in the same boat. And with that being the case, I'm more than happy to take the two damage from my opponent um, to prevent from being locked under another Blood Moon at the end of this turn. I'm going to crack the Sphere here, because Sphere does have to actually be activated in order to get the draw effect where Star can just be destroyed. Alrighty, so it's our turn here. Um, so we can go get a Sanctum here, and then we would be able to uh, activate it with the Ballista being cast for... Um, enough mana, so that's what I'm going to do so we can have a great follow-up threat because I want to get a warm coil. You are a brave man for or woman for being able to uh, driving that snowstorm while uh, getting your CDL. That's going to be really crazy for you. Good luck to you, and I do hope you are safe during this time. It's uh, supposed to be pretty nasty. So some pretty cold weather and then a whole lot of snow. Which means we're just going to be shooting our opponent for a bunch of damage. So the big upside to uh, one coil here and with us having as much mana as we do is even if they play another blood moon, we're going to be able to drop the worm coil and try to end the game that way. Chalice on one. Scarab Clan Berserker. It's renowned, does damage to me. So this is pretty good. We're going to be able to go Worm Coil and then also into a Ballista. And that's good enough to win the game. Awesome. We're 2-1 and one now going into the fourth game. Fourth match. I 
and I'll be predominantly playing Modern on this stream. Uh, Modern is my favorite format. It's been my favorite format for a very long time. Um, I'll definitely try to you know change things up by playing different tier decks, uh, different brews, and then seeing what else will pop up. And if people want me to play particular decks as well, I'm more than happy to accommodate. Just let me know what decks you guys want to see. So this hand, uh, once again, we're in a situation where we only have one Tron piece. We're not being able to fetch up any more. We're not assembling Tron at any reasonable level, so we're going to go ahead and ship this. This hand's much better. We have natural Tron, and then we have a Sweeper, and then on top of our deck, we have a Threat. So we're just really good at this game. I think this is the same, same blue-white player we played just a bit ago. Oh, Vanifar, that is very realistically going to be my uh, next video. I am uh, going to be testing out like so the popular version that everybody's really excited for is the kiki version which i think is going to be a solid deck i've got my whole deck purchased already it's coming in this week super excited to play it i'm also really interested in uh, testing out the malero version of it or the the devoted combo of it going um four color minus red because uh, i think that version is going to be just a really uh, powerful mid-range deck with the ability to threaten that combo at any time i know that the uh, the Kiki version is going to be able to do its job very well because it's going to just have so many lines that it can always just combo off, but um, I like the idea of being able to back it up with a relevant game plan too. So. The other brews that I've been uh, trying to um, piece together in Paper Magic is... Um, a Heartless Summoning deck. It was one of my favorite decks in Standard was uh, Havengul, Lich, Perilous Mirror, and um, Heartless Summoning. So then you, once you have Havengul, Lich in play, Heartless Summoning in play, you can pay one mana, target the Perilous Mirror, and shoot something for two, and you can just repeat this for every mana you have at Sorcery Speed. Um, so big fan of that deck. I've been trying to create a version of it that I can play in, uh, in Modern here as a combo deck. So excited to see what we can do. I'm going to drop the Worm Coil, see what our opponent has. Path, reasonable. Yeah, I think so as well. It's, um... Like, the ability to just be able to fetch up anything with Birthing Pot is going to be just amazing. And then, let's cast this big boy. And then having multiple lines of, they have to respect different combos within the deck that you can fetch up at any time while having these great combo, uh, these great uh, just answers to your opponent. And then your sideboard is just going to be filled with tons of one ofs that you're going to be able to fetch up at any time and just go, hey, you're not doing that anymore. Alright, so opponent had answers for both of our threats, so we're left with just a uh, O stone and in hand and on the board. Alrighty, so we're good and we've got an Ulamog. Let's see what we got from the star. Okay. And the third threat was too much for our opponent. So blue-white control gun. So I'm doing the same thing I did previously, where I want to take out the pieces that I don't feel is that relevant. So 
thought. I'm bringing in thought nuts. I'm bringing in thrags, and I'm bringing in the nature's claim to, to deal with them. And then I'm taking out the pieces that usually just soft to the path. It's not super relevant, and I just want to deal with them that way. So. Why am I not playing Tron on Arena? Did I miss something? Is Arena on a on a uh, modern now? Or is there a new deck and standard that is uh, Tron? It's... Ooh, this hand is rough, um, but also has high potential. Um, so this hand could go stirrings into stirrings into Sylvan Scrying. Um, and I have two threats in hand. Uh, it does require me to always fetch up that uh, necessary Tron piece, but I think we're going to try it out. Did not hit a Tron piece, but we're gonna grab that thought knot and ship it back to our opponent. Alright, we're gonna go for another nature ancient stirrings here. Opponent's got the counter. We're going to play our forest and pass it back to them. Oh yeah, I know. I definitely know who you are, Epoch. Very excited to have you join my stream. Alrighty, so we can try to assemble Tron the really hard way now, so we're going to try for it. Yes. And I know I also don't have all the bells and whistles that comes with a lot of the streamers out there, but I am definitely working on some of that stuff. Definitely try to have more and more as we go along here. Opponent's got a field of ruin for our mine. Which is just rude, opponent. And they're going to take it from our deck. Wow, so rude. All right, so that's okay. So that's why we also board into this, the Thought Knots and the Thrag Tusk, because that lets us play a more mid rangey game. That Ulamog's probably never being cast now. So we got a power plant. We're just gonna play that and we're gonna try to see if we can just resolve this long time. We did, awesome. So opponent's got Island, Colonnade, Path, and Cryptic in hand. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and take that path. And that way at least we're just the Cryptic. Thought not gave you indigestion, man. You were lucky to not be around when the the Eldrazi, the Bant Eldrazi and Eldrazi Tron decks were a thing because those decks definitely just dominated the uh, format. Yeah, I love that Texas deck that uses uh, Thought Not. So we're gonna swing in, see what we can do with the thought map. And the fact that they can start blinking it too to just exile the other hand like the uh, Bantle Drowsy deck did. Whew. All right, so when I do have um, 
all my Tron piece, one of my Tron pieces surgical. Uh, my next step is usually just just get my um, utility land, so then I can eventually get access to them and do things with them. So uh, I'm going to grab. You'll either want to grab the Sanctum or the Factory normally. Ghost Quarter is relevant here if you need to take out a Colonnade, but I feel pretty good with where we are, so I'm gonna grab the uh, Factory here. Opponent's Cassic Serum. Opponent still has one Cryptic in the hand as well. Do you splash blue for Hydroid and Tron? You know, uh, my friend Andrew and I have talked, and um, a couple other guys from our team, uh, Team Swish here, we've talked about this blue-green Tron deck where we get to just play, like, Nyssa that you can pay X into to do stupid stuff. Um, and then have access to things like Hydra Crassus so you can uh, draw a bunch of extra cards too. Alright, so we'll play Factory and we're gonna swing in on our opponent again. Sorry about that. Pretty sure that was a uh, robocall. like we are reconnected so I'm gonna pause on playing real quick while we see if we can get the stream back up and running all right looks like we're good so it's the end of turn and we are gonna go fetch up a sanctum of Ugin So if opponent wants to trade Colonnade for Thought Knot, draw a card, they wouldn't be able to cast Cryptic. Um, so in that case, if they don't have uh, a negate in hand, we'd be able to resolve a card, which I would be pretty happy with. just clicked past my turn so oh, that's a that's a punt I am mad about that okay So once again, we're going to try to just swing here, see if our opponent wants to do that trade. And a path. And we still have a forest, so we're going to fetch that up. So we could cast the card that we know is going to get countered, or um, 
we can just hold off on it. I don't see a real big reason not to cast the Karn. It'll get the counter out of their hand. We are at 8 mana now, so we're not that far off from casting the Ulamug. We have another land in hand. Um, but I'm still going to go with the Karn here. So if we sack this, we can go get probably Thought Knot um, or an Ulamog. We already have the Ulamog. So I'm actually, I'm going to hold off actually, not thinking about it. Because I'm next turn I'm going to go to 9 mana, then I'll be at 10 if I get one more land. And I'll be able to then take out both colonnades with uh, Ulamog. And then uh, be able to just uh, settle in from there. So bad news for us, our opponent took out our Sanctum, but we don't have another Forest in the deck. This is one of the downsides of only playing four Forests. Aggressive here? Or trying to oh they drop a Bane Slayer. Okay. So we are okay with this. Three, four. We're gonna go spear into just drawing an extra card here and then Karn. And then Karn's going to exile their Bane Slayer. They're going to be able to kill it with their colonnade, but not much we can do about that. We are removing a, a Bane Slayer, and then it's going to eat up part of their turn here. So opponent got a stony silence for us. We're gonna drop this Thrag Tusk, gain some movement, another threat, and we'll throw out the sphere. If we do need to get rid of the stony silence, we'll nature's claim it, but as of right now, I'd rather just uh, see if we can get in with this Thrag Tusk and win through having that threat. Hey, comrade juicer. Oh, what's up, dude? Awesome, so we got that game. So we are three and one now. Trying to go for that four one profit league. Oh yeah, of course. I'm playing Tron, always making money. All right, so this hand, once again, it doesn't have any Tron pieces. It's not going to be able to assemble Tron reasonably, so we're going to go ahead and ship this. This hand has a chance of assembling Tron. Um, it's like the other hand we had, where it's going to require stirrings to find a piece. we got to draw a piece, and we got a Sylvan Scrying for it. Um, 
I'm not really happy about this game, but I think I am going to keep it. And we got another Stirrings on top. Looks like we got another mono red deck. Oh my goodness. Is, is the format just mono red and blue white control nowadays? Alright, so we did get a Tron piece, which is good. And we're going to ship it. Runaway Red, okay. Um, so if anyone has never played Tron, uh, as far as sequencing Ancient Stirrings and Sylvan Scrangs, I should have gone over this earlier, but you almost always want to cast the Ancient Stirrings first because it's going to let you pick up the card. So here, Stirrings could either find us a mine or a tower, and then the Sylvan Scrang could find the other piece for us. Additionally, I want to cast the sphere here um, and crack it right away just to get an extra card deeper, letting my stirring see just an, uh, one more card deeper, so which is real. Okay, so we didn't find another one. We did find the expedition map, so we could assemble Tron that way, so that's what we're going to do. Um, and then we're just going to ship it back to our opponent. Yeah, I heard Mono Red is just like the deck to play in standard now with the new format. And yeah, if, uh, if Mono Red's the only thing being played in a modern right now, it's going to have to change over my main board and sideboard quite a bit. Oh, I hope he notices me then if he's going to become the Steam Senpai. I feel like this turn's going to hurt. This turn's definitely gonna hurt. Yeah, I actually am very interested in that um, uh, the mono red uh, Phoenix decks or the blue red Phoenix decks. I think they're just great. Oh my word. Do they have enough to kill us? Five, 10, 14, 16? Are we going to two? <laughs> or are they going, are they thinking about casting? No, it wouldn't be profitable for them to do that, is it? No, it would be. It would be for 17 instead if they remove the counters off the runaway and flashback they're faithless. Because um, all the things we get another plus one, so then we may be putting us exactly two one. All right, so we drew another Tron piece, which is great, but we are dead, for sure. So gonna concede that game. There was thought for um, the Wormy Boy, but like, I always want to just try to be assembling Tron. So if I can't assemble Tron, it doesn't matter if I'm getting Worm Coil or I'm getting another threat. And at that time, I needed the Expedition Map to finish uh, assembling Tron. Um, so that's that's kind of where I was at with it. So this matchup, they have Battle Murder um, and Faithless Looting. So I don't know if. Uh, keeping in the relics is good enough. I definitely know that I want to bring in the Thought Knots, the Thrags, and the Spatial Contortions here um, to just kind of take care of it. Uh, all their stuff. Um, I think that if I can pressure the board soon enough, I won't need that. I definitely wanted to get rid of my top end, though, because that's just not going to be that relevant um, to get rid of their... so I can stay in the game. I'm going to try getting rid of relics this time around. Uh, focusing more on just having the board presence on the board rather than trying to focus on having it um, taking out their graveyard and stopping them from doing what they want to do. Um, so Karn is pretty weak here um, as well. So we're going to take them out. And then uh, I, think, I think we're going to run it like this. Oh. 
we're on the no lander, so we're gonna go ahead and ship this. And we're on uh, Notron, so we're gonna go ahead and ship this as well. Uh, this hand has a shot, so we're gonna keep it. boy okay so we got a stirrings on top but we only have one sphere um and then another stirrings and then double scrying um i'm going to send the stirrings here to the bottom because i want to increase our odds of getting either another green source or getting another tron piece it's going to be difficult though because um if we can hit another tron piece right off the top that's obviously we'll just a solo tron but otherwise it's going to be pretty hard here so we're good at magic awesome so this isn't foolproof because we actually uh, we actually don't want a Simultron, I don't think. Uh, I think we're going to be better off using the Sylvan Scrying to get a 4 so then the following turn we can go Sylvan Scrying again to assemble it because we have this Thrag Tusk that we want to be able to cast as well as that Ancient Starks. here into Sylvan Scrying for a tower and we're gonna ship it back. So our opponent's not going crazy which is good for us. Light up the stage is so interesting. Everyone seems to be pretty split on that card, though. All right, so we are going to play our Thrag Tusk and then uh, Spatial Contortion, the Runaway that has two counters on it. It sure was these. I mean, I'm a Tron player. I mean, this is what I do. Well, it's got a Blood Moon. Start off with an ancient stirring, see what we can find. Another land, map, and sphere. All very not exciting. So we're just gonna take the land here. And we're gonna go star. And we're gonna go green. And we're gonna ship it back to our opponent. And I really don't want to attack here just because of their ability to just generate so much power on the board, so I'm more than happy to wait. They are bolting us. Generating mana. And they got a reveler. Okay. Making our life difficult. I could use a worm crawl, that'd be great. I'd also be willing to accept an old stone. So if we block the runaway here, we won't be able to block the bedlam ruffler from this point on. But we'll be able to take down the other thing still, so I feel like this is fine. Not good enough to get a worm coil so we're going to ship it back to them
All right. So here, I don't want to block the Reveler because it's not going to accomplish anything for us. I'm going to just take a little bit less damage. I could block either the Swift Spear or the Runaway. Um, if I block the Swift Spear, if they cast two spells, then they would eat our beast, uh, where the Runaway has to cast uh, three spells. So I'm going to go and block that instead. Another bolt. I think two bolts. I find it interesting. They just didn't shoot the beast anyway. Need a worm coil right then. So, um, unfortunately, that's game for us. So, we didn't lose money on the league, went 3 2, as uh, standard modern decks should always go. So, thanks so much for. Uh, joining me um like i said i'll be trying to stream every uh, sunday night uh, after i get done with homework so it should be done around six or seven o'clock i'll be starting it up um i'll try to stream again um during the week um i don't know if it's going to be tuesday wednesday or thursday yet it just kind of depends on my um on my schedule um i'll be uploading this video to my youtube channel um i don't know if i have all my content linked between here and the youtube channel but i'll make sure to update that if i haven't already um, thank you so much for everybody for joining me. I really appreciate it, guys. Um, so if you guys have any suggestions or thoughts or improvements like that, really would love to hear any of it. You can shoot me a message on uh, Facebook because I think most of you guys know who I am. So thank you again and have a great night, everyone. And uh, please be safe out there this week if you are in uh, Michigan, in Southwest or uh, Southeast.